What's going on everyone? It's Sean with another Tesla video and in this one I review Tesla's new performance model 3. Now I'll say right off the top this is not a full review of a model 3. If you want my detailed dive into the model 3, the actual car, click the link down in the description because I did a full review of a model 3 back in February. This one is going to be specific to the performance features of the Model 3. So I'll cover three categories. One, the exterior changes in the Performance Model 3. Two, the interior changes. And three, the performance. So let's dive in. So with the exterior changes, there's not a whole lot that's changed. The body style is identical to the non-performance version with the only difference being the tires, wheels, and brakes. With the non-performance Model 3, you have two options, the 18-inch aero wheels, the 19-inch sport wheels, and now Tesla's introduced a performance version, which gives you 20-inch wheels with sport tires. In addition to that, Tesla added some larger brake pads with these beautiful gleaming red calipers. Now along with the Performance Model 3, you also have the option to do the Performance Upgrade, which does include the tires that I just mentioned, as well as a carbon fiber spoiler and a Performance Badge. Now the wheels and tires are a larger part of a Performance Upgrade that is optional with the Performance Model 3, which include the performance brakes, the carbon fiber spoiler, the lowered suspension, the alloy wheels, and an increase of top speed from 145 to 155, as if 145 was not fast enough. Now the two things that are not on this car that are included in this performance upgrade that will likely be added by the owners, John and Michelle, are the carbon fiber spoiler and the dual motor performance badging on the back of the car. Aside from the top speed increase, I really like the features in this performance upgrade. I think the 20 inch tires give it a lot more of a sporty look in addition to the red calipers. And if I were to compare my driving experience from the 18 inch wheels to these 20 inch wheels, I would say that the Performance Model 3 is tons more responsive when turning corners and doing a half-assed slalom on the road that I was on while testing. The car also seemed to stop remarkably better with the performance brakes versus the non-performance Model 3 that I've also driven. If you decide to do the dual motor all-wheel drive performance package, that's $64,000. A $10,000 increase from the non-performance dual motor all-wheel drive at $54,000. And if you want the performance upgrade, you're going to have to pay an additional $5,000. And to get this particular multi-coat red on this car that I tested, that as well is an additional $2,000. But man, does it gleam and shine. I don't know, there's just something about this red that really pops and stands out. And I think that with the body lines of the Model 3, the red just really, really accentuates the beautiful design of the Model 3, unlike some of the other colors that are offered. Now, one of the other changes with this Performance Model 3 is the premium white interior. Actually, it was initially offered only with the Performance version, but now Tesla has opened up the premium white interior for dual motor all-wheel drive non-performance as well. But it is an additional $2,000 if you want that premium white. This is the same premium white that is used in the Model S and X, and man, does it shine. When you get into the car, everything just seems brighter with that white interior. Some have experienced blue jean transfer from new unwashed blue jeans onto the white seats, which is very difficult to get out. So if you are considering the white interior, just keep that in mind. Otherwise, I think it maintains very, very well. With this premium white package, the door panels on the doors no longer are the Alcantara. They're now the premium white interior as well. It's the same material that are on the seats. However, the white strip that runs across the dash just below the HVAC system feels like a hard plastic. It would have been super cool if Tesla would have added a carbon fiber option. Myself, personally, I'm not wild about the plastic white trim across 
the dash. Now to round off the interior upgrades for this Performance Model 3 are the lovely aluminum alloy pedals. I really like these. It does give it more of a sportier feel and I think it looks a little bit more modern than the plastic, the black plastic that normally goes on these cars. Now let's get to the specs that you've probably all been waiting for which is the performance of this particular car. I did get a chance to test several runs from 0 to 60 and it's really, really impressive. Three, two, one. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it is so quick. It is so quick. The car was charged to 100% when I received it for testing, so I'm pretty confident that the performance numbers were as good as they are going to get. The tires that come with this performance upgrade are Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. I have the same type of tires on my Model S, so I'm very familiar with these and I think they work really, really well for gripping the asphalt when you're doing a 0-60 to 60 test. So what was the conclusion on the 0-60? to 60? 3.4 seconds. I intended on using an app that I usually use for my car when testing out performance metrics, but for whatever reason it wasn't pulling up and it wasn't connecting to the Performance Model 3. So we'll just have to rely on the actual video footage of the moment that I hit the pedal to the moment that it hit 60 miles an hour. There may be a one-tenth of a, of a second difference, but at least you'll get a pretty good idea. Now, how does this performance compare to the other models, the rear-wheel drive and the all-wheel drive non-performance? The rear-wheel drive version of this car is advertised at 5.1 seconds from 0 to 60 miles per hour. The all-wheel drive version registers at 4.5 seconds. So the fact that the performance version of the Model 3 is a whole second faster is pretty good. It's not as blistering quick as the performance version of the Model S and X, which I think is intentional by Tesla, but it's still very, very impressive and for nearly half the cost of a performance Model S and X. Overall, I think the car is fantastic and phenomenal. If you're looking for a sportier version of the Model 3, I definitely recommend this one. The total price for all of these features in this particular car that I tested was $77,500, which does include all of the performance add-ons as well as enhanced autopilot. So be prepared to spend some money. It is a little bit more than the non-performance version of the Model 3, but in my opinion, I think it's well worth it. And I would be remiss not to give a huge shout out to the owners who allowed me an hour with this car to put it through some runs. Big thanks to Michelle and John. I hope you enjoy your performance Model 3. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you're planning on spending $77,000, does it make more sense to go with the performance Model 3 or a basic standard Model S or X? Sound off in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching this video and see you on the next one.